Hello and welcome to The Pretentious Show, I'm Alexander Devonport. You know, whether you want to call us Generation Y or the Millennials, there's something beautifully embarrassing about the post-70s generation. Growing up in the 80s and 90s, we were spoilt and told, you can be anything you want, if you pursue it. Here, have a certificate of participation. We have fallen upon evil times. The world has waxed old and wicked. Politics are very corrupt. Children are no longer respectful to their elders. Each man wants to make himself conspicuous and write a book. Well, I guess as George Orwell once said, every generation imagines itself to be more intelligent than the one that went before it, and wiser than the one that comes after it. But how can you blame anyone for thinking this? These days, apparently, our selfish millennial mugs are on YouTube, casting our selfish rants upon the cosmos, explaining how movie adaptations of our favourite cartoons are evil and have raped our childhood. I remember watching the angry video game nerd and thinking, wow, I was afraid my generation would turn into that. Optimus Prime, man. He's like Robot Jesus with guns. So switch off that VCR recording of Daria and ready your Instagram account, because we're about to take part in everyone's favourite subject, getting angry at young people, as I'm about to show you a delightfully selfish movie called Art School Confidential. Art School Confidential is a satire of Art University, a place that is, in the least, very odd. Students are taught the only way to succeed is to be better than everyone else at being profound and original. The movie centres around Jerome, a humble teenager fresh out of high school, who has the simple dream of being the greatest artist of the 21st century. What a humble young man. While he is charming in an introverted kind of way, his desire is terrifying. And yet we, the viewers, empathise, because who wasn't a young person who saw themselves as immortal? There are two dramas fueling the story. One is Jerome's undying wish for glory, and the other goal is the love interest, Audrey, an artist's model. Complications arise as it is revealed someone is strangling people around the college. Jerome's antagonist is Jonah. He's the cool, smooth-talking guy who turns up and quickly becomes everyone's favourite student. Whether it be the classmates or the teachers, everyone loves Jonah. Audrey is, of course, infatuated with him. Jerome's mentor is Jimmy, an old graduate of the college who says the only way you can get anywhere in the art world is if you suck cock. Oh, well, he gave him one of his own paintings, so that's nice, I guess. While Jerome does not follow the advice of fellatio, he instead decides to conduct a morally ambiguous plan. He passes the painting off as his own, then returns to steal the rest of the mentor's work as his final exhibition project. So by the time the third act comes around, the respect you might have had for our so-called hero has dropped dramatically. This is where we get the punchline of the whole movie. Turns out his mentor was the murderer, and Jonah, everyone's favourite artist, is an undercover cop investigating the frequent murders. Jerome's stolen paintings contain evidence, and Jerome is accused of murder, and sent to prison. Finally, we get the resolution the whole movie has been building up to. Are you ready? Because you're not going to like this. You're really not. Here it is. Jerome gets his wish and becomes the world's most famous artist, and sells his work in prison. Oh, and he wins the girl at the end because, of course he does. Ha! I'm sorry, I need a really cheap, unflattering drink to get me through this. This is an incredibly cynical movie, but it's a result of what art school is. Each student is only told one in 100 will make a living as an artist. So therefore, 
you are special. Be something incredible. Be the greatest. Do something no one has ever seen before. Students are just backed up against the wall. So of course desperation for fame and genius is there. There's no room for anything else. It's hard not to mention this movie without mentioning its sister movie, Ghost World. This, like Art School Confidential, is directed by Terry Srigoff. Also, both of these movies were comic books, written by Daniel Close. It's clear that responsibility and maturity are big subjects in Daniel's writing. Ghost World is the tale of two girls straight out of high school, trying to figure out this big thing called life, while attempting to remain non-conformist. In the end, some responsibilities are learned, and some are not. But that's what growing up is all about. The characters in this movie are relatable and likeable. Relate this to Art School Confidential, where no lessons are learned at all. To be fair, this clearly is done on purpose, to create a satire of art college. However, while creating an entertaining commentary upon education and life, the movie itself suffers, and the main character becomes the most unlikable, depressing prick. Also, while this movie is a satire, it very quickly becomes terrifyingly sincere, as if to say, yes, framing yourself for murder is the only way to get yourself fame as an artist. Notice me, Sampai, notice me! While this movie will definitely make you angry, I suggest anyone who went to university sees it. It has a feeling that says, oh yeah, that's what the youth is these days. But really, this movie, while it may not seem like it, will become timeless. It has a certain charm and is genuinely funny, with lines such as, how long have you been doing the triangles? I was one of the first. Finally, here's my message to all those in art school or some form of university. One, saying the human race is evil does not make you more wise. Two, not eating McDonald's does not make you a better person because ideology does not equal morality. And three, don't panic and do things just for attention. Life's a hard pill to swallow, but it needs to be taken. So while you're working your 9-to-5 job knowing full well you can't be plugged back into the Matrix, and your peers are constantly looking at you saying, you now work for the man, just remember, you're the one who can afford the alcohol tonight. Ow! Today's episode of The Pretentious Show has been brought to you by the works of Daniel Klaus. Daniel Klaus, Daniel... Just, just read his books.